going to have to get the feet wet, unfortunately, and it's going to be blimmin' cold. Morning everyone and welcome back to the vlog. I'm back in the Ockle Hills on another recce in unexplored territory and uh, it's absolutely stunning here. This is Dollar Glen, somewhere else that I haven't been and I'm looking forward to exploring. There's actually a castle somewhere along this route but it really is a stunning morning and these trees are absolutely incredible the way that they're just sort of following the path down through here. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what we find today. There's the uh, river that flows through the gorge here. We've got stunning forest. As I say, there's a castle on the route. So let's go see what we can find. So I've just come down to this viewpoint here, the main path, which is uh, the one that you're supposed to follow through the gorge and along the river, is actually closed. There's been some storm damage and the bridge is actually, I think it's uh, having some work done on it. But I've just come to this viewpoint and there's an incredible waterfall just off to my left here. And I'm just looking around just to see if there's a way of getting down to it because it, it would make an absolute stunning photograph. But I'm not sure that there's a route to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send the drone up and just go get some pictures with the drone for now. And then I'll have a look around and see if I can get down there in some way. So after failing to come up through the gorge, what I've done is I've come up the road, the castle road, and come round the other side of the castle. 
The castle was built in the 15th century, according to the sign, and was owned by the Campbell family, which makes sense, seeing as it's called Castle Campbell. So this is a beautiful scene behind me, quite stunning. It's, it's really busy at the back there. There's lots of trees that have come down. So I think what I'm gonna do is make my main focus these rocks and some of these lovely ferns that are coming off the rocks. We've got some ivy hanging down and some beautiful greenery. The sun's coming round, so I've got to move fairly quickly. You can already see it on that side rock just there, but gonna have to get the feet wet unfortunately, and it's going to be blimmin' cold. So you can see I've really had to come right out into the river here just to get at a good angle. It is freezing on my feet. Excuse the white legs, but it is absolutely Freezing. I think within being in the water within the first minute, my feet went numb, which I suppose is a little bit of a bonus. But it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, loads of debris, lots of trees coming down, which so it's not going to be a real picturesque scene, but it really is nice. There's some uh, ferns that are coming off of the rocks on the right-hand side. There's a bit of ivy hanging down. I'm not sure how that will look in the image. I'll play around with that a little bit because it's not... It won't look like it's connected to anything. But I love these rocks in the foreground tumbling down, some rocks on the side. Let me show you what I'm looking at on the back of the camera. So you can see we've got these big boulders in the front with the water cascading through them. I've got a nice little group of rocks just on my left the bottom corner, but you can see that light on that rock on the left. And I think that's just gonna be a little bit too much. So I'm hoping for a wee little bit of cloud just to sort of diffuse that light a little bit because it really does just, you can see that when you look in the image, the first thing you look to is that left-hand side with that rock with the light. But I really like those ferns up on the right-hand side coming down on the rocks and the water cascading down behind. It's a shame about those trees, but I mean, it tells a story. These trees over the years have come down, they've fallen into the river, slowly they'll break up and work their way down. It's, uh, it's beautiful. So anyway, let's, uh, let's take the first shot. My feet have gone numb completely. As you can see there, this spectacular pink colour, and uh, I just cannot feel a thing in them at the moment. So I'm just giving them a little bit of a chance to warm up in the sun, although I've got to say, that sun isn't very warm at all. And uh, then possibly back out into the water, just to make sure that I really have got that shot.
what I'm trying to do now is eliminate some of that mess, some of that debris that's coming down the falls. I'm a little worried that that last shot just had too much. Sometimes it, sometimes it can just be overwhelming if you've got too many trees that are coming down the falls. So what I've done is I've come right back and I've put on my long lens, my 70 to 200 millimeter lens, and I'm making that bottom part of the falls the main focus and including some of the water in front. So what I'm doing really now is, is knocking that, that sort of mess behind into the background a little bit, making it less of an integral part of the image, if you like. So I'm just waiting for that sun to tuck behind the clouds, which it does now and again, because it's right behind me and it's really bright. It's just capturing the bottom of the waterfall and the rock on the left-hand side. But I'll show you what I'm looking at on the back of the camera. So you can see that uh, by coming right back, I've been able to eliminate a lot of that mess that's up the top of the falls there, those trees that have come down. My main focus is these rocks that are in front here with the water cascading down between them. I've kept some water in the front and there's also a couple of smaller rocks that are right in the bottom of the image. And you can see that uh, left-hand side, that water coming down where it's quite white, the sun's catching that. So. Uh, that's definitely way overexposed, way out of the dynamic range that the camera can cope with. So I'm waiting for the light just to go behind the hill, behind the clouds, just to soften that out a little bit. But I do like the light on the rock, so I don't want it to disappear totally. And uh, anyway, I think this will be a better image. I think there's less mess, more focus on the falls. And uh, anyway, it's the shot. There's a, a beautiful waterfall just tucked up around the corner. And uh, I'm just wondering if I uh, go paddling again. My feet have only just warmed up. But I'm just wondering if I paddle out through, it does drop quite deeply, but I might be able to get a good view of it. So I'll go and take a look. Okay, so you can see that I've, uh, I'm back off with the shoes and socks, back out in the freezing cold water, but I've managed to work my way around. This is just about as far as I can possibly get because it really plummets deep down through here. So I've come right round to the bend to capture the falls coming down in the backdrop, and it is beautiful. There's one branch that comes down that is just in my way, probably going to have to take that out in Photoshop. Uh, but uh, we'll see when we get back. I don't like to take things out if I can help it, but it just might be just that too much distraction. Anyway, let me show you what I'm looking at on the back of the camera. So you can see I've come round and you can see on the back of the camera here, we've got the falls are just cascading down with that beautiful rock just in the foreground and the lights touching the sides of the walls with the moss dripping off of it. It's a stunning scene. It's a shame I can't just get round that little bit further, but uh, you can see I'm pin tight against the wall and uh, I'm not going anywhere. Another foot that way and I'd be up to my neck. So, uh, but uh, it's absolutely stunning. I'm on my 70 to 200 millimeter lens, zooming in as far as I possibly can. 
capturing some of that light. Now, it is definitely too bright at the moment. The sun is right behind me, but there is some cloud that keeps coming over. So I'm going to wait for that cloud and try and get it in one shot if I can. It's mainly catching right down in the bottom part of those falls. You can just see it, but uh, absolutely stunning. Now, I believe it's where we've got two burns that are coming down and meeting in the same place. And uh, it really is just cascading off. I'm going to try and shoot on around about a sixth of a second if I can, just to sort of freeze that water, keep the detail in it. I don't think I'll be, uh, I think this portrait's definitely the way to go. I definitely don't think I'll be trying a landscape shot. But uh, it's just a shame about that branch that comes from the top over there. I've, I've just managed to keep it out of the waterfall. So, uh, but we'll see. I don't know, a little bit of Photoshop maybe to take it out, but we'll, uh, we'll decide when we get it back on the computer. My feet now are absolutely frozen and I cannot feel them at all. So uh, I'd better get a move on. Anyway, if it comes out any good, it's the shot. So this is the final image with the branch and with a bit of Photoshop magic now without the branch. Let me know in the comments below which you prefer and how you feel about removing objects from your images. I know personally that it's not something that I like to do. So if any of you follow me on social media, Instagram or Facebook, you'll probably have seen that I've recently partnered with Sunwave Photo and uh, I've been using their geared head for a couple of years and uh, a wee while back, unfortunately went down on some rocks when I was out photographing on the coast and uh, managed to sort of bend one of the actual adjustment knobs on the actual head. But uh, some way Photo kindly reached out and have partnered with me. So they've, they've given me a carbon, new carbon fiber tripod and a replacement geared head. So I'll, I'll review the tripod after a sort of a, a few vlogs, just give myself a chance to use it a little bit. But I've got to say, so far, I'm really impressed. One of the things that I really need from a tripod is something that is sturdy, especially when you're photographing in these sorts of elements. We've got water coming by. We're at a right angle. I don't want any movement in the camera. And uh, this really is a good, sturdy tripod. But I'll, uh, as I say, I'll do a review in one of my next vlogs. And if anybody wants 5% discount of any of their equipment, you can use the code Andy Lock in checkout. And uh, anyway, back to the photograph. So another waterfall. There's definitely a theme going to this video, but uh, I just couldn't resist it. It's quite stunning. The light is so strong at the moment that it's really just that little bit too bright, really. But uh, I'm definitely going to come back. I think autumn would be a good time. I think some of those brown rich sort of colors coming through. And there's definitely some birches on the backdrop, which is really nice. But uh, I've got to take the photo anyway. So I'm going for a portrait trying to eliminate some of the sort of trees and dead roots and branches that are coming out either side there and really just honing in on those falls. The water at the bottom is absolutely beautiful. It's that aqua sort of green, which is really nice as the light's catching it. So uh, anyway, I'll show you what I'm looking at on the back of the camera. So you can see a fairly straightforward composition of shooting portrait. We've got that beautiful moss left and right hand side of that waterfall that splits almost into three 
just as it cascades off the top. That light just drops now and again, and I can get the perfect exposure, but I'm also bracketing just to make sure that I don't blow out the water, around about a sixth of a second. And I love the color and the water that's just coming down the bottom there. It's like that aqua -y sort of beautiful, nice and clear, fresh water coming down. I can, you can see that uh, I've really honed in so that I'm avoiding the, the roots and the old trees on my right. And some of the dead ferns that are on my left-hand side, the green ones look really nice, but there's some brown ones which are overhanging and don't look so good. And there goes the light. So I'm gonna take a couple of shots at that exposure and hopefully won't have to blend them when I get back. I think that's it for this episode of the vlog. It really has been an epic adventure of waterfalls today. Let me know which one was your favorite. Was it waterfall one, two or three? I haven't seen them myself yet, so that could be risky asking, but hopefully, fingers crossed, they all came out okay. Thank you so much for watching the vlog. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification button so that you don't miss an episode. And well, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. <laughs>